for Rutgers, what breaks the tie between the win, the loss, and the draw? Yeah, it's going to be about defensive organization. We saw some of those struggles in that match at Creighton a little bit earlier this season. I think being able to keep that shape, keep that spine, making sure that they don't get stretched out when Yale, who can move the ball quickly up and down the field, get in transition. Now we are underway. Rutgers in the scarlet kits and Yale in the white kits. So even though this is early in the season and uh, maybe in the 80th minute that will show up, the fact that both teams have so many players back, I mean, Yale all but one goal from last year returning, that's got to be an asset to the way you can play in these early September games. Yeah, I definitely think that, that this Yale team is experienced. I wouldn't surprise me to see if they're the team that represents the Ivy in the NCAA tournament this year. And Princeton's always kind of been the program we've talked about the last few years emerging from that conference. But this is a Yale team with a lot of experience. They've got some good speed, good talent, good technical ability. Well, Yale with a chance around the box, but now Rutgers takes it away. That's a foul against Yale. Worth mentioning early, by the way, the Bulldogs are a very physical team. I mentioned the tie they had against St. Francis. They recorded four yellow cards in the last half hour of the match. They were fourth in the country last year in fouls per game, so a lot like the one Rutgers played on Friday, today's match could be very chippy. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that a team is overtly physical. It means being able to make smart fouls. It was, I think it was almost two to one in their season opener against St. Francis, the, the fouls in the direction of Yale. And you wouldn't necessarily think that from a team that was on the front pedal in terms of the, the play and the quality of play over the weekend. Uh, but Yale's a team that does a lot of tactical fouls. They're smart. They try to get other teams out of their rhythm. And that can be very effective against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights team that does like to possess the ball, build out of the back. It's really something to watch. It's, there's, there's a very differing clash in terms of, of the style and the temperament of these two teams. Rutgers trying to go direct to the forward line, but Yale takes over in the midfields. And there is the one big new addition for Yale, number 13 in white, Max Rogers, a junior transfer from Fordham, who assisted on their lone goal. Yeah, well, uh, Max is certainly somebody who who's, we're going to be keeping an eye on in this match. He, he Last year was very strong for Fordham, has good pace, good technical ability. They like to get him in 1v1 situations. And Apollo Carroll helps Yale win the throw in right by the corner flag. Oh, with the Bulldogs, only one game of sample oh, of a sample size to go off of so far, but they're a team a little bit like Rutgers that's frustrated they're coming off of a draw because of how many chances they had. Yeah, they had a lot of chances. Uh, I think it was 21 shots and a, a, a decided edge in shots on goal against St. Francis. They had the better of the run of play, possession. They knocked the ball around confidently, and yet at the end of the day, sharing the points with the St. Francis team that really bunkered in for good chunks of that match. You saw Rutgers keeper Kieran Dalton. We talk a ton about experience in the early goings here, but Dalton, the big point of youth, just a freshman. This is his second start, his third start. Yeah, uh, New York Red Bulls Academy product, someone that the, that the MLS club was very high on coming up through their system. He commands the area well, very good with the ball at his feet. Rutgers playing forward. And on the back line, TJ Prestis clears it away. Prestis, who had the lone goal for Yale in the season opener. He's an experienced player, number 22. He, he started all 16 matches, the only player for Yale to start every match last year. Commands the area well, good with the ball at his feet, makes a lot of good wins, takes a lot of good angles defensively, very, very good reader of the game. Now here's Rogers trying to gain an angle for the service and said that's on target and Dalton plays it. Yeah, the Australian is crafty there on that side. Sometimes you'll see him on the right side, sometimes on the left. Likes the ball at his feet, demands the ball at his feet in those 1v1 situations. And Yale has instantly added him as their set piece taker. That's how Rogers earned the assist on that goal back on yes. Saturday. Seven goals, three assists with Fordham last year. It was a big loss for Fordham. He was a player they were counting on a lot this year. 
Well, we've talked about it. Yale's defense quite stout. They're going to be tough to unlock, but perhaps Rutgers has something here. M.D. Myers, the transfer, trying to cut back to his right foot. And the foul goes against Myers. He had Justin Harris stuck under his legs. And in the end, it helped Harris. Yeah, Myers has been an impact player for Rutgers, leading the team with two goals so far this season, coming in, really adding some of that goal-scoring element that this program, I think, was lacking last year. There was good balance. There was distribution in the goal scoring. But having that one player, the tip of the spear, who can kind of make those runs, hold up the ball, but run those channels and finish, that was lacking from Jim McKeldry's squad. Yeah, Myers, senior, 55 career points thus far, if you include the two goals he had in Rutgers' opening win over Omaha. Now Myers is one of the reasons why the Scarlet Knights are quite bullish on their ability to score more goals this year. That one's won well in the midfield by a freshman, Cole Crothers, and now out wide for Ula Mayland. Tio on the overlap, trying to play it in for Avila. And now a shot blocked. That's on the edge of the box. Will it be a PK? I think so. Yes, it is. Tio wiped out on the edge of the box, and Rutgers will have a chance from the spot. Well, that's an industrious play there from Tio, and this is what Rutgers wants to do. They want to get that ball out wide. They want to get in dangerous situations. Now, that was just a late challenge there coming on in from Harshi for Yale. Nothing in it, nothing intentional, but a little late and studs up. That's going to get called every time. Oh, now there's a debate on whether that foul was inside the box. Rudy Sadik is our referee today. Take another look. Yeah, this one was clearly inside the box. About a foot, foot and a half inside. Now, this is one of the few calls in college soccer that our officials can go to a monitor and review. And so that's exactly what Sadik will do. And I, and I love that rule. I know it slows down the game, throws off the rhythm, but you got to make these calls right. And I, and I definitely think when you're looking here, that was a foul inside the box. Yeah, it seems so. Uh, so Sadik, it's our first time at your sack this year. We get to see an official's review. He'll get the same sort of camera angles that we just showed you. He'll get to make a ruling and... So being objective, it, this should be a, a quick review, I think, Christian. I, I think that will be for, for referee Soren Stoika. We're just talking about him. 23 goals in his career. And so he'll go one-on-one -on -one with Elian Haddock, the fifth-year senior goalkeeper for Yale, reigning Ivy League Defender of the Year. A chance for Rutgers to go on top in the opening 10 minutes. Myers, top of the net. Rutgers goes in front, 1-0. Make no mistake about it for Myers right there. He punishes that ball perfectly placed. Don't think there's a goalkeeper in the world who's going to stop that one. Rutgers up 1-0. The velocity behind the shot is just one reason why M.D. Myers, as a new addition, gets the chance. Yeah, M.D. Myers knows how to score goals. 14 of them last year before transferring to Rutgers. Three so far this season. But that's placement and power. The perfectly taken penalty kick right there. Not a ton for Haddock to do. And instead for Myers, it's his third goal of this season. That leads these Scarlet Knights. And for a Rutgers team that was hoping to get a win out of its match Friday against Princeton, they led late in the second half. That's a great way to flush that out and get ahead early. Yeah, Haddock there guessing right, doing well on it. That was Divizio coming in, cleats up a little high. The question's going to be from, from Yale right here. Was that intentional? Was he showing those cleats? Should that be a card worthy? I think they might have a valid claim. No, nothing out of the pocket. Now just the spray to mark the grounds. So no card, and now an immediate chance for Yale to answer. And Rodgers, the adept set-piece taker, is on it. Yeah, Rodgers has done this many times for Fordham last year, serving balls into dangerous spots right here. Headed towards goal, but it's wide. 
And it's a goal kick. It's no, it's a, a corner. corner. Took a deflection off one of the Rutgers bodies there in the box. I think that was intended for Paolo Carroll. That was a perfectly placed ball there from Rodgers, right about 12 yards out. Six white jerseys in the box for the Bulldogs as they look to answer Myers' penalty kick goal. Bending over the six and not the intention there. Dangerous idea though, going to the back post. Again, Carroll was, was sniffing back there. And I think Prestis may have been hunting in the back post as well. Rutgers needs to be careful. We've called out Carroll's name a couple of times. We featured him before the broadcast. He's someone with a very high work rate. Will do a lot of running, a lot of closing down, trying to get after that back, that back four there, disrupt possession, create turnovers. That's Tommy Divizio there for Rutgers, back as a fifth year senior. Didn't play in the Princeton match. Non-COVID illness is what Jim McKeldry said afterwards. Uh, good to see him back. He's an important part of the team. Well, mishandled. And Carroll helps Yale win it. And Acosta's slow to his feet. He was the one on the raw end of the collision with Carroll. He may have been cleated. He's hobbling, but Carroll now trying to receive it. And Acosta back in the play. Yeah, we've seen the feistiness from Carroll there. As soon as Yale loses the ball, immediately going into the counter pressing. I just love the sound of a Vuvuzuela in the <laughs> evening. Well, that was the invitation put out on social media over the weekend. Students are back on campus. Classes start tomorrow. And so some of the students brought their Vuvuzuelas back from home. I think those would be a welcome addition to any lecture hall class. Don't you think so? Uh, I cannot see one of Rutgers' esteemed anthropology professors taking kindly to a noisemaker in the back row. I would love to see it, though, just as a sports fan in me. Or cowbell. <laughs> you could always use more cowbell in a lecture hall. <laughs> there you go. Or you could just climb out of a window like I've seen someone do. <laughs> in class? Ill-advised. Well, you, you didn't sit in on that class. <laughs> Uh, There's a bit of a buzz back on campus. It's good to see some students walking around. Smiles on everybody's faces. Start of the season for the athletic teams and you know, start of the semester for kids. Always happy at the start of the semester. Now Rutgers will get this. It goes off of Yale. I want to go back to what happened on that goal. Good to see Chris Teo getting down that left flank. You know. We did a lot of games last year, Dom, and it seemed like we were calling Chris Teo's name consistently. New York Red Bulls Academy product, someone who has experience having practiced with the first team, having practiced with their USL squad. He brings so much in terms of energy and work rate, but just that ability to deliver that final ball, that pass through, very important for the width that Rutgers needs. Quana Brayboy tries to play over to the top for Eric Lagos, but it's reeled in by Dalton first. Now Rutgers with Tio has the benefit of, at minimum, five guys who play defensively that can score. And that can create on the offensive side. We got a Yale player down now. Another collision in these opening minutes. And it looks like Lagos. We play on. Here's Mayland. To his right foot. And his shot stops. Four Bulldogs converging there. Yeah, Lagos behind the action, not happy at all, thinking that was a studs-up challenge there. Uh, 
Avila plays it back for Crothers. And now Divizio. Good patience though from Rutgers. Yale digging back in, good shape defensively. Staying tight, not getting drawn out as Rutgers is passing the ball. Rutgers now willing to possess. Make Yale chase the game just a little bit. And this isn't usual for Yale. This is a team that likes to be on the front foot, likes to be aggressive, likes to attack, likes to move forward in numbers. And they can certainly play a more up-tempo brand of soccer, too, when you consider the back line that they've got. We've talked about their veterans already, and Haddock in goal, too. Joey Zielinski surveying the field. Now, of course, every match changes with every goal, but that MD Myers seventh minute PK goal has impacted this game and impacted the way Rutgers has played already, I think. Yeah, it certainly has. And yet, I, I think in many ways, oftentimes you will see a team sit back. Rutgers has done a good job of possessing since that goal in the six minutes since Myers put that one in the back of the net. And now it's Yale driven to the back line. Prestis. Uh, Lagos will not be able to get there. Yeah, Lagos is an important player for them. He has a strong pedigree. His father grew up playing with the youth national teams, played for Bob Gansler, the late Bob Gansler, who, who was a tremendous uh, soccer coach in the United States for years. And, and Lagos is somebody five goals uh, last year, third on the team. Does a lot of hard work, a lot of running. We keep saying that about these Yale players, but they're very, they're a very industrious team. They're they're a team that wants to play a, a, a nice possession, attacking style of soccer, but they're willing to dig in defensively. All ten field players. A very nearly a giveaway, and Yale's attacking third. And they're unlucky to not receive that. Now Avila, long run, and it comes out wide for Temple. That's a good service stop. But Rutgers earns its first corner of the night. Yeah, good idea there from Temple trying to serve in that cross before the Yale back line was set. Yale was just drawn out just a little bit on that. Temple was looking to take advantage. Looked like Myland was the one streaking in looking to get on the end of something. So here's Ula, a native of Norway, who's earned his way into the starting lineup with assists in the last couple of matches. Our official trying to keep the peace in the mess of players right inside the 18-yard box. I don't think peace has been sufficiently kept. Well, now we play. Edge of the six-yard box, and it's tapped wide. That's a pretty clean look from Joey Zielinski there, who just scored his first career goal last week, uh, arguing that he received some contact, but it'll go out for a Haddock goal kick. Yeah, Zielinski's a player who always seems to pop up in dangerous places, smart, Sits in the pockets well. Didn't quite put that one on frame. To me, I think Zielinski was the most impressive player game in, game out for Rutgers last season. You watch him, the, the work that he brought, the effort that he brought, just everything week in, week out, <laughs> every single game. Not an easy thing to do when you're so young in your career and, and playing in that pivotal role uh, the presence of mind that he had, but also just his ability to join into the attack and track back was a big reason why Rutgers took a big step forward last season. And Zelensky was highly regarded. Another Red Bulls Academy product. Oh, was pinballs. Carroll with a chance, but Dalton fortunately positioned well. That could have been bad. That could have been a tie game. Yeah, Carroll very nearly getting on the end of that one. Again, that's that's the danger of Carroll, his understanding, the angles that he takes following up on this one, about a half a stride off from, from putting that one in on goal. 
Good read from Dalton. Didn't have much time to react on that one. Divizio launching in. Yell trying to win some possession, and Brayboy does. Uh, Divizio comes around and stops that pass. If it connects, Quanta Brayboy would have had a great chance. Well, now here's Carroll after the giveaway. Yell trying to equalize after MD Myers headed a seventh minute PK goal. Yeah, they look lost for about five minutes after after that goal, but did, they've done a nice job. They've settled in, got a couple couple looks at goal, good, good set piece. Uh, referee stops play, and I think he's trying to silence the complaints from both Zelensky and Carroll. Yeah, this has gotten very. This has gone beyond chippy a little bit now. Very quickly, these two teams decided they haven't liked each other. They don't. They don't have much of a history. Now this is the the third meeting between these two teams, all time. Well, let's not spoil it. But we need to have something to talk about at halftime. <laughs> Serious history, yes. It's a very brief history. That despite being teams that are what two hours away from each other. I like this though. Jim McKeldry has done a nice job of, of kind of reigniting uh, some some of these local connections over the years and out of conference matches. I think it's great to see. And a lot of these players know each other. They played against each other. They, they there's a rivalry between the schools and the fan bases. I think it just adds that extra element. Uh oh, misplayed by Haddock, and he just barely gets a toe on it keeping it away from Myers, looking for a brace. Yeah, the, the senior looking a little shaky there at that moment. Now you don't often see Ellie and Haddock caught off guard or out of position, but that's what happened there. Yeah, all Ivy League, all Ivy League defensive player of the year last year, 37th in the nation in saves. He's a good goalkeeper with the ball at his feet. I think that just took a little bit of a funny bounce on him. It's a little bit of a hard pass back. Now there is Haddock, native of Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. You see his numbers. He's a big goalkeeper, six foot four, commands that area well. Did a nice job almost getting that penalty kick right there. He was not far off. That was a well taken, well taken PK by Myers, but Paddock covers a lot of turf. And for a goalkeeper that size, surprising how good he is with the ball at his feet. Solid with his distribution. Paddock last year led the conference in shutouts in Ivy League action. But now here early in Yale's season, again, this is just their first weekend. They opened with a draw back on Saturday. The offense trying to go to work and hoping that this is not a repeat of last time out where, you know, let's face it, their head coach, Kylie Stenard, said afterwards, felt like we were chasing the game for too long after St. Francis PA scored quite early. Yeah, it was, and, and I think it was a frustrating result when you look at <laughs> 21 shots to four for St. Francis. I think it was 11 on goal to two. I mean, it was very one-sided, and I, I think what's going to be, what we're going to be looking for from this Yale team, not just how do they respond. I think they've done a good job. They're responding well. They're getting stuck in. They're getting involved in the 50-50 challenges. They're winning those all-important second balls, but are they going to be able to be dangerous? All too often last year, they became one-dimensional with Paolo Carroll. If he wasn't the one creating something in the box, whether it was a hold-up play or poaching in front of goal, uh, Yale sometimes bogged down a little bit. It's a talented team with a, with a good core, good spine, but they need that width, and I think that's what they're hoping that, they, that the addition of Max Rogers can bring to them. Right now, we haven't heard of Max Rogers' name called out too much from the run of play. You know, it's played out wide for Harshi, but out of his reach. Harshi had done well to beat a double team earlier in that possession, but Rutgers will take over. And how about how many? How about the quantity of scarlet jerseys in front of the ball there? You know, we're 20 minutes into the match, but I think it was eight or nine 
played directly in front of the ball. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting the bodies behind the ball, the ball for sure. They're keeping their shape. They're not getting stretched out. In a large part, that's because Yale right now, and this is going to be frustrating to coach, but Yale right now moving the ball very slowly. Carroll knocked off course. May just be seeing, seeing the result of heavy legs here. Yale, this is just their second game. Uh, obviously, it's a high-level competition against a Big Ten program, a solid Big Ten program. Rutgers now entering their fourth game, going to be a little bit sharper. Um, Rutgers also played on Friday night. Yale played on Saturday. Yale had a travel day, so th there may just be a little bit of sluggishness here now. They may just need to ride out this first half and, and come back in the second half and maybe feel their way into the game a little bit. Chris Teo, the winger who helped Rutgers earn the PK, plays it in. Temple. Nice ball. Acosta not able to get there. Prestis back for Haddock and better with his feet that time. Uh, perhaps not quite. Divizio is right there. And now rotated for, for Teo. Avila playing for Temple along the sideline and one times it in. That's the skill of Jackson Temple there. Not an easy ball to pull down. Acosta cuts it back for Divizio. Myers towards the back post. Oh, it's close. I think that might have taken a little bit of a deflection there from Myers, but a nice snap header. Seeing Rutgers after riding out Yale for about the last 10 minutes. Looking a little bit more proactive. Yeah, ricocheted off Jeremy Haddock's shoulder, the brother of Elian, their twins. Yeah, we've, we've called his name out a couple times in this first half. He's had a couple big interventions for Yale. He's been impressive. So second corner of the night for the Knights. And Mayland will take it again. Plays it short for Crothers. And now Avila. Mayland one time, and it's wide. And perhaps speaking to the idea of some tired legs, Yell readies four substitutes to check in here at the midway point of this opening half. Let's see, we've got Kave Zahira Leslam, an all Ivy League forward from last year. Kai Mose, a junior midfielder, a freshman midi, one of the few freshmen to really factor into Yale's team this year, Aiden Jay. And Gelber Lemus is sophomore on the back line checking in. Yeah, Zahira Leslam is, is, is a quality player, good with the ball at his feet. We keep saying about these Yale players willing to do a lot of tracking back and hard running. Yeah, the hero slam wears number 24, 16 points last year. Yeah, good vision. Good with the ball at his feet, quality can serve a nice ball in. What a luxury for Yale to have a player of that caliber coming in off the bench. There's Aiden Jay, plays it wide for Harris, curling it in. The hero slam got a head on it. And now Tio clears. Rarely do you have a team playing a high level of anything, soccer or whatever sport, that has only one senior on the entire roster. But that was the story last year for these Bulldogs. And for Carroll, one on two. He heads it back, but it doesn't get through. Now a second try, that stopped as well. What's the call? It's a handball. And it's a PK for Yale now. I want to go back and see where the hand was, if it was in a natural or unnatural position there. Apollo Carroll here. I thought he was going to put that one on goal. That's not going to be the handball call. That's the second one. That was Tommy Divizio stopping Max Rogers on the first try. But then Hugo Leguenic is the one who, for the moment, is guilty of a handball. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'd like to see that again. And so the Gwenick is saying that the ball hit him. He didn't reach out. Now will our official, will our referee review it? No. Torin Stoika. Not signaling that he's going to go to the monitor. So Paulo Carroll, the fifth year senior, Yale's top goal scorer a year ago with a chance to tie against a freshman here in Dalton. Carroll to the ball. And it's straight in. Clinical there from Paulo Carroll. Dalton going to his right. Carroll going to his right. Paulo Carroll's got his first goal of the season. One of the Ivy League's most feared goal scorers a year ago. And you said the word, clinical. Yeah, he's been very active all over the field defensively with his tracking back and work. So in a little more than 25 minutes time, both teams are in a penalty kick, both teams convert, and we're all square. And I think it's a deserved score line. Yale's done a good job of getting themselves back into this match. Probably the better run of play for the most part over the last 15 minutes or so. Well, for Carroll, it's got to be a bit cathartic, too. Now, we talked about how many chances Yale had in their opener. Carroll, in just 40 minutes off the bench, took five shots, put three of them on goal, and had nothing to show for it. Yeah, Carroll led all Yale players with those five shots and three shots on goal. So Myers in the seventh, Carroll in the 26th. And now does Rutgers play a little bit more forward than what we saw from them in the 20 minutes in between? Yeah, there, there wasn't a whole lot of rhythm from Rutgers between scoring that goal seven, eight minutes in and right now. It was a little bit disjointed. They looked dangerous that, that one time when Jackson Temple served in a ball. But other than that, it's, it's been a little static from Rutgers. And this is better. This is passing between the lines. Rutgers did make one sub during that break. It's Ian Abbey right here, the freshman. Curling it in, but can't pick out Temple. And now Crothers reels it in. Abbey, that's deflected. Myers still finds it. Lays it off for Temple. It's off the crossbar. That was a pretty build up there from Rutgers. Myers doing a good job, hold up play, getting it out, and Temple very nearly giving Rutgers the lead. Take another look. Not really much space between Haddock's outstretched hand anyway. But Temple very nearly put Rutgers back on top. Yeah, Haddock almost using every inch of that six foot four frame. Now Temple forces the giveaway. And he earns a foul, too. He'll give Rutgers a, a free kick. A little bit of veteran understanding there from Temple, feeling, I think, the impending contact. Others has looked good on these set pieces for Rutgers. Impressive to see a freshman taking them. A product of the Portland Timbers Academy, played for their U19 team this past year. Uh, highly regarded coming in. And now he has space to step into this bending cross, but we'll scratch that all out. Scratch that all out. There was a foul. Just before Crothers struck the service, some contact inside the box. I know Haddock already came out of the goal at that point to talk with his back line, but Dom, you very nearly had your Sports Center top 10 moment. Unfortunately, that never happened in the score sheet.
Foul goes against Rutgers. <laughs> Crothers, the freshman, getting into it with Carroll, the super senior. Now, Carroll had the last contact. Is he the one who goes in the book, too? I don't think so. If you're Yale, you like to see that, though. You're super senior. Getting it in, getting involved, little chippy. Crothers respotting the ball, less than a foot away. Doesn't quite seem like a fair fight, does it, Dom? Carroll 6'3, Crothers 5'8. Not 6'3. Dalton misplays it. Oh, it's wide of goal. It's a foul anyway, so you can scratch that out too. And by the way, the fouls right now, 7-4 to four in favor of Rutgers. That is not an ordinary counter after less than a half an hour of soccer. I think every Yale foul has been on, on Paolo Carroll. <laughs> He's been in the middle of everything for this Bulldog team. Very rarely see a six foot three target forward who does as much movement as he does. The Rutgers will make two more substitutions. And it's on the offensive half of the field. And that's Nick Spittle. The first time we see Spittle here at your sack field. He transferred in as sophomore, native of Toronto, on uh, Toronto, Canada, but spent his first year of college at a Canadian institution and now deciding to come to the States. And Nestor Cabrera, freshman from nearby Raritan, New Jersey, on the midfield line. And Abby can't cut through the crowd. Abby's got a lot of pace in those legs. And TJ Prestis was well positioned. This is the kind of soccer game that I think fans enjoy, right? Both teams have the have several goal scoring threats, physicality, just a healthy bit of dislike between the two teams. <laughs> there certainly has been. These are two teams that very quickly sized each other up and said that they did not like each other. Hasn't been short of entertainment. You're right, Dom. Do like the response from Rutgers over the past five minutes, though. Pressing higher up the field, closing things down, clogging up those passing lanes. I think a little bit of a better understanding of how Yale is going to be coming out from this game. For Yale. Divizio trying to cut the two defenders for Spittle, but Prestis is there, and Haddock kicks it away. I think for Yale, you have to be pleased on the road against a quality opponent. Now, could that be a booking? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's Leguenic there. Late, hard, and a little high on that challenge. Uh, upended Kaveh's a hero a slam. Now for all the contact, that's just our first yellow of the day. Max Rogers not on this. It'll be Prestis, so they'll play short. Moe's curling, and Rutgers is fortunate there was nobody there. That was dangerous. Yeah, that's some good work from Moe's right there, sending it in. Gale keeps attacking that back post, and why not when you've got a a six foot three number 10, capable of crashing that area. 
Yeah, a bit appropriate that Paulo Carroll wears the number 10 jersey, huh? Here's Rogers on the corner. It's a hard, strong corner, but even still. Rogers has looked dangerous on these set pieces for Yale. Really whips them in nice with some velocity, with some pace and good placement. It's like a Rutgers touch last. It'll be a Yale throw in. And promptly squandered. Again, both teams looking to get above 500, looking to earn winning records tonight. Our Rutgers has one of each result thus far, and Yale just one draw. Launched forward, can Spittle track it down? Well, Haddock will first. Well, you're seeing Rutgers now looking to play those wide spaces with Spittle and Abby on either end. Lots of pace there. Fresh legs, young legs for Rutgers. And Yell goes back to that right sideline with Sahiro Lishlam. And Lemus, that was out of play. Colin Beasley's going to be checking in for Rutgers any moment. You mentioned Abby. He's back on the ball, product of the Philly Union Academy. Now, unsurprisingly, it's been a big effort for Jim McKelladry, the Rutgers head coach, now in his fourth season. He's recruited the local academies well. We've talked a ton about the Red Bull guys, but a few from the Philly Union and NYCFC ranks as well. And Portland Timbers, two players from the <laughs> yeah. from the Pacific Northwest making their way out to New Jersey. I, I think it's a it's a big area for growth and a and a big area that Jim McKeldrin, when he took over this team a couple of years ago, looked and said was lacking and <laughs> it's something that's very unique in soccer in this country to any other sport. You don't have an academy set up anywhere else with a professional sport where they're developing young players to be pros potentially and only a couple players each year are going to be going through that system and, and, and some players may not necessarily sign the professional contract those players make good targets for, for programs like Rutgers well situated between three of the top academy systems in the country and NYCFC Red Bull which has sent numerous players overseas into the national team and Philadelphia Union which Brendan Harrison, a, a product now starring for Leeds United in the English Premier League. They've made Leeds a bit of a bit of a fan favorite in the U.S. too, I think, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Tyler Adams, a New York Red Bulls product, Academy product, playing on Leeds, and Jesse Marsh, the former New York Red Bulls head coach. Good spot on this free kick. It's cut back by Carroll, and uh, Rutgers can be happy that Crothers was first to that ball because it sat dangerously on the verge of the six. I don't think there's a soccer program in the country that has such access to an array of academy level talent from MLS clubs. And keep in mind, it's not just, you know, a youth team playing. These players oftentimes will go up to the USL level and play there in the summer and be able to train with the first team, with the MLS players, be around the pros, be in that environment, be in the training facilities, learn and see. So when they come into a college program, 17, 18, 19 years old, there's a little bit more seasoning. And also, they know at any time that these MLS clubs could reach out to them and sign them to a homegrown contract. So you perform well enough, you're, you're one of these players, you could end up on an MLS roster from, directly from college soccer. That was one of the many reasons why soccer is unique. Also, the growth of USL and USL2 and all the college players training there in the offseason. Here's a driving ball that Dalton gets his fingertips on and parries away. There's a lot, a lot of activity down that right side for Yale. Attacking almost exclusively. Dalton caught a little bit out doing a good job to get on that one. And by the way, you mentioned 
Colin Beasley checking in for Rutgers on the forward line. M.D. Myers exits. And so does Yale's goal scorer, Apollo Carroll, as Sander Pele checks in. Curling ball ends up right at Dalton. He's fouled as well. Pele, just like the famous soccer player. Did I not say that? No, I'm agreeing with oh, you. Oh, good, 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 good. Why is, the, why is the instinct whenever I say something, Dom, to always <laughs> question me? Is it something about my face? Is it my demeanor? Is it my misdemeanor? I don't, <laughs> no. I don't know what it is. I, I just the, the look of shock that I agreed with you on something was palatable. Well, it's just because we had, we had noted that it was famous soccer player, the way you would say, not just any soccer player, famous soccer player, Pele. I'm just clarifying. I had the opportunity to interview Pele early in my career. And? I asked him the question, if you weren't Pele, who would you be? Because Pele was a nickname. Right. And he told me I would be an airline pilot. Could you imagine? <laughs> uh, boarding Continental Airlines flight, whatever. This is your captain speaking. Pele. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yale, yeah, playing well forward with limited numbers here. And Rogers now will send it back and they can get gathered. Now well into the final 10 minutes of this opening half now. Rutgers one, Yale one. Both on penalty kick scores. MD Myers in the seventh minute and then Paulo Carroll in the 26th. Nick Spittle, he's been busy on this right sideline in his own right. Driving it in and oh, Abby was a step in front. Dangerous ball though from Spittle. Clear to the back line. Spittles look good since coming in. Not just the speed, but the, that ability to play that ball. Plays it off now for Divizio. And Rutgers not with the numbers in the box there to do much. And that's why Yale pounces. And now Cabrera takes it away. And Cabrera beats a defender. Driving in, Abby tried the bicycle. Oh, that was ambitious. <laughs> it was ambitious, it was ostentatious. But let's give a lot of credit to Cabrera there, down that right side, just didn't give up. And then this deft touch springing in the earth. <laughs> Ian Abby, the freshman. You Game know, four of his college career, and he slams the turf afterwards as if to say, I should have had it. How simple was that? <laughs> you know what? Jim McGeldry, the Rutgers head coach, he likes the fact that Abby's going to do that. He likes the fact that his player's brimming with that kind of confidence. Very nearly pulled that one off. You've got to be a bit thankful, too. I couldn't tell who the back was there for Yale. And almost got kicked in the jaw. Now we get a substitution here for the Bulldogs, too. Ryan Coat checks in, sophomore midfielder. And Aiden Jay, the freshman midi who was a mid-half entrant, comes off. Now, intriguingly, for, for all the offensive activity this first half has had, and there's been plenty just beyond the two goals, there's only been one additional shot on goal. Plenty of end to end, but as I think we've seen from both of these teams through this season, that, that final product in, in the attacking third is lacking. Now, don't forget, earlier in the half, Jackson Temple for Rutgers rung the crossbar, so that doesn't count, but uh, finishing not quite there for either side right now. Yale moving the ball well, but not with a lot of purpose necessarily. Just disjointed from them. They, they get those passes through. They kind of get it through the middle of the park. And then all of a sudden, it seems like they just sort of lack any idea. And if, it's, if it's not Paolo Carroll's hard running and kind of 
his poachiness, so to speak, Yale really hasn't offered quite as much as we'd seen them in the, in the season opener in that final third. Also mentioned to Max Rogers' name quite a bit in the opening 10 or 15 minutes and not quite as much in the last 20 or so. Now here's a chance as the hero Lishlam forces forward and lays it off now. Pele upended. And a little contact at the end between he and Tommy Divizio. A little card afterwards too. Goes to Zahiro Lishlam. Now one more sub for Yale before the half hour, or before the 45 minutes is over. Diego Zafanella will check in. Now a freshman midi from Ellington, Connecticut, making his college debut. Now for an older team in Rutgers, lots of youth on the field right now in these waning minutes. Crothers and Spittle and Abby. Oh, Spittle right on cue, beats Lemus. And now Abby. And Rutgers is able to vacuum it back up. I think the past 10 minutes, Rutgers has probably looked the best, the most composed, the most dangerous that they've looked so far in this match. And it's because of those young legs coming in. Their athleticism's really been difficult for Yale to handle. Uh, Abby, one time did forward for Avila, and now it's played back for Tio. Well, still some moments here as we get towards the final minute of play in this opening half. And now Zelensky with room to step forward. And he's cut off, but we play on. Advantage called. Zelensky's still down. As now Divizio curls it in, and Yale denies that. Oh, that was a tough challenge, flying through the body, studs up. No contact was made, but ooh. And now Zelensky back in the play, as Divizio has it, 30 seconds to go. Avila trying to play it back for Spittle, but missed him, and it'll be Yale ball. There's another look at the contact. Yeah, no contact on that one, but came flying through. Another yellow issued. I think that was to Zaffanella. Yeah, it was Diego Zaffanella. Welcome to college soccer two minutes in. Here's a yellow. All right, now the countdown on. Now, plenty of physicality, plenty of offensive activity, but at the break, this match is tied. Just a penalty kick goal for either side at the break. Yeah, it's certainly been even a lot of end to end back and forth type of stuff, not lacking uh, by any of the physical metrics. A lot of hard running, a lot of fouls, a couple yellow cards. Yale right now, I think, feeling pretty good to be going into halftime on the road with this squad that's still sort of forming its identity tied up at once. Speaking of Ian Abbey and the other youthful forward and first half sub, Nick, Smittle, Nick Spittle, they both make the second half start. Uh, interesting there, an adjustment for Rutgers at halftime. We're underway. Something else we should mention right off the top here for the second half. 
there is precipitation in the forecast at some point tonight. It's quite humid here in Jersey. There's rain in other parts of the state right now. Don't know if that'll come into play here. And Chris Teo played it through the legs of a Yale defender, but Ian Abbey not able to get there. Vizio taken down, equipped a little bit by Max Rogers, who played a factor, especially early in the first half. Yeah, Rogers looked very dangerous for Yale. The Fordham transfer played uh, you know, a tremendous role for the Rams last year. Seven goals, but he's looked a good part of the provider here for Yale. And now Abby elbowed off the ball, and it's another whistle against the Bulldogs. Not even two minutes into the second half, already two fouls for Yale. <laughs> this was a team that put up 21 shots against St. Francis in their season opener. They have four so far. It's been a good test for Yale. Well, Yale, as we've talked about, finished second last year in the Ivy League, and they were picked to finish that way in the preseason Ivy League media poll. Princeton, the Rutgers saw Friday or in the top billing. But when you think about these two teams and trying to earn some important wins early in the season, for both teams, they're in the same spot in that way, no? Yeah, I think it's important for building confidence, but for Yale, their ticket to the NCAA tournament is going to be winning the Ivy League. So these matches are about putting under pressure, learning, growing, and developing. Quite frankly, facing a standard of play that they're not going to see for, for many matches in the Ivy League outside of Princeton. Jeremy Haddock forced to backtrack there. And now with help from a little contact, Chris Teo wins possession. There's Paulo Carroll. That's well played forward and right on the verge of the box, so not much Kieran Dalton can do aside from that. Good read, though, from Dalton. You won't see many freshman goalkeepers come out that definitively and authoritatively. Just make the simple play. Sometimes the simple play is going to be the best one. Now Chris Teo can't believe it, but he concedes a corner, and this is where Max Rogers is most dangerous. The Australians look good on set pieces for Yale. An early opportunity for Yale to go in front. It's over the six. Yale wanted a handball there again, but it's cleared away by Joey Zielinski. Carroll now tries to cut it back on Zielinski, but Clips it off him instead, and so it's another corner kick. Yeah, I just have a feeling we're going to call out Carroll's name at least one more time in a dangerous position in this match. He's just, he's too industrious, too smart with his movement, playing off the shoulder, and then popping up in dangerous spots on set pieces. A new taker, it's Quana Brayboyne, perhaps that's why. Plays it in quickly for Rogers, and it's driven right back out. And I think that clip Spittle on the hand. That's the call. It's another handball against Rutgers, this time just outside the box. A little bit of ping pong here. Just sticking that arm out. Easy call for the referee that one. You go right so yet another opportunity in these opening five minutes as the Bulldogs look for what would be their first lead of the season. Conceded early against St. Francis Brooklyn and only able to equalize. It's the same story here back in the first half. Now Bray Boy and Rogers crowd the ball. Rogers, it's knocked down by the wall. 
Another corner kick for Yale. And now if you're Rutgers, you're just trying to survive the flurry of chances here in the early goings. Yeah, it definitely has been a proactive start to the second half for Yale. That's Brayboy again. This time he plays it into the box. And Dalton receives it cleanly. It could have been difficult too. Jeremy Haddock, the six foot four defender, was right there with Dalton. Six foot two. And Dalton making his third start of his career. Coming off a four save performance against Princeton. Once again, he's done quite well for himself. I want to see where Yale's legs are by the end of the second half. This is a team just their second game right now. They looked a little tired towards the end of that season opener, and understandably so. Right, Chris Tio with a big bump at the end. Oh, yeah, right now has four players who have played the full time. No surprise, three of the four are on the back line. There's one of them, Jules Oberg. Have not said his name much, a senior midfielder from Sweden. Lifted in, Carroll on side, and Dalton right there. Kieran Dalton only has one save, but he has several additional good reads on plays like that that could have been a goal. Yeah, and I think that's got to be the frustration for Yale. They've had some possession, they've knocked it around, and then they sort of settle for that long ball, that hopeful long ball over the top. Speak of long ball, it links up with Spittle, who now plays it forward. Curling on from Myers. Rutgers exploding from the back line to the box in the blink of an eye. Well, Myers has never seen a shot that he doesn't want to take. And <laughs> that one was from a tight angle right there. Running down that right channel, looking, trying to find that near post. Yeah, Leon Haddock forced to make his first save of the night. A whale of a save from Haddock. And right, now Matthew Acosta will take the corner with Ian Abbey to his left. Struck in low, Zelensky receives it and sends it back out. He'll try again. Oh, it's flicked on. And now received by Cabrera. Tried to tee up Avila. Rutgers wanted a handball now, and they don't get it. I think that was a good non-call from the referee on that one. Hugo Le Guenic getting involved there, the center back. Some good combination play, though, from Rutgers at the top of the area. When they move the ball quickly, Clean challenge from Acosta as he wipes out Carroll. Now can Rutgers build off of that combination now? That's when Rutgers looks most dangerous. They, they play those one, two touch passes very quickly into space. T.O. drives it in. Yale first two at this time. Spittle very nearly getting on the end of that one. Now Abby wins it, it takes a deflection and slows it down for Elian Haddock. Uh, Spittle's been very, very impressive in his time here. We see that challenge there. I think that was Carroll searching for a foul. He assumed the contact and going back to Spittle there for a moment. He's been impressive. His runs, his timing, his movement, his shape. Defensively, he's done a lot of good things, but, but primarily in that attacking third, he's, he has not looked out of place in the slightest. Now we have a stoppage. It looks like the time on the clock is off. It certainly is. At the end of the night, it will clock out. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's a hard challenge. No whistle there. From great distance for Rogers. Intriguing for a moment. Uh, advantage played. A yellow after the fact for Cabrera. Yeah, that yellow is for Cabrera. Cabrera looked good in some moments in the first half coming in, bringing a little bit of width, some overlapping runs. Had one dangerous run about with about five or six minutes left in the first half when, when the run of play was kind of starting to go against Rutgers just a little bit. He hasn't looked out of place. We'll revisit for one moment, by the way. The dad joke, nicely done, Christian. It's an earned right, and you've earned it. Abby. He's looked sharp. And it'll go for a goal kick. Not surprising to see Abby, a, a product of that Philadelphia Union Academy, will work great. The pressing and the counter-pressing is part of their DNA. There was an interesting moment in the, in the first half when Abby came in about five or six minutes into a, his substitute appearance. And he just, he, he took the ball, he was in a dangerous place, isolated there on that left wing, looks up and there's no one running. And he passes the ball back and the freshman absolutely starts berating his teammates, saying attack, move forward, attack. He has one direction he wants to go. Wow. Now it's a card. Interfering with the free kick. So for those counting at home, it's now five in the book. Now Rutgers moves ahead in that department, 3-2. Good loft on this. Still hanging around. And credit Quantic Gray Boy just for playing that ball, keeping it alive. It's going to go for a throw in. Yeah, Rutgers throwing. There was either going to be a foul against Rutgers or a Rutgers throwing, and for a minute there, the referee wasn't calling either of those options. <laughs> That's why I was confused, yeah. yeah Soren Stoika has intervened quite often in this match, and he's had to. Again, there's been plenty of contact to talk about. Dalton again, quick to spit it out. Trying to work quickly here. As Rutgers and Yale search for a go-ahead goal, and well now it's Abby who's doubled over. Justin Harris guilty on it. I like Harris in this match. He's done a nice job with his movement forward defensively. Has, has kept things in front of him. Hasn't been easy when, when you've got Abby. Sometimes Jackson Temple moves over on that side. Chris Teo making those deep runs. He's done a nice job staying at home. Covered a lot of turf in this match. It's, it's been a good match. Uh, sub waiting for Rutgers here. It's Anthony O'Donnell. Back in the first half, Yale went quite deep on its bench. Seven deep, to be exact. How about this for Abby? Playing it to the top of the box, looking for Myers, and it deflects wide. A corner for the Knights. But you like that presence of mind from the freshman right there, settling not an easy ball, doing so and touching the ball back to Myers right there. This was a dangerous look, but a nice deep ball over the top. Settles it well, presence of mind to pull back. And then Myers, we talked about it a few moments ago. There's never a shot that he wants to pass up right there. This one earning Rutgers a corner kick. Well, Donald in on the midfield for Nestor Cabrera. And meanwhile, it's Acosta who drives it well over the box. Got nobody there.
Here's Carroll playing along the sideline here. But down in a heap once again. It's Tommy Divizio this time on the contact. Now Carroll's done well to earn a free kick. This is from the verge of intriguing territory, right on the edge. Yeah, I think a little bit of senior guile, super senior guile there from, from Carroll. Again, sensing the contact was coming. Oh, what can Rogers make out of this? Even a great set piece taker. Oh, Dalton over, flies it, and it's in. And Yale goes in front, two to one. Kieran Dalton tried to punch it away. In the end, it looked like Eric Lagos headed it home. So now the Bulldogs, for the first time this season, get to play with the lead. And how does that impact tactics? We saw Rutgers have been a little slow in their movement, in their build-up, in their passing. When they've moved the ball quickly in the second half, they've looked dangerous. They've got good speed. They've got that advantage on the wings. Yale, however, their back four has been very good at containing, staying tight. Rutgers just not winning those second balls enough in dangerous spots. By the way, after the goal, some substituting for both sides. For Rutgers, Cole Sotak and Cole Crothers both come on. I think that's a frustration foul there from Rutgers. And it's Anthony O'Donnell, who just entered a few minutes ago, who commits it. Good distance on that ball from Haddock, and <laughs> it earns another whistle. And it seems a heap follows Carroll wherever he goes. Just struck a few moments ago for his second assist of the season, second in as many games as a Bulldog. Edge of the six, Harris, and it's over the crossbar. And let's say off Harris, it took a last deflection too. I think that took a little bit of a deflection off of one of the Rutgers defenders there on the edge of the six yard box. I see the subs for Rutgers. Jackson Temple, who came off at the half hour mark, is now back on. So first time in a while we see Temple on the pitch. Yeah, Jason Brugge on for the first time too in the midfield. The Rutgers coaching staff trying to shuffle the deck, so to speak, on the offensive side and find the combination that will find the equalizer. Rutgers needs to play faster, needs to play quicker. Especially with Jackson Temple there. He can be so dangerous down that flank. And there is Temple. Dummies his defender off the ball. Brugge, he tried the volley and it's stopped by Harris. But Rutgers keeps possession with Crothers. And he spun down, Yale presses forward. And Carroll's attempt to flip, to flip the field does not work. And some pace back in this match. Cut back in for Myers, time in the box. It's cleared away and it's kept in play too. No, it's a corner. It seemed for a moment that Gelber Lemus had kept this in. Yeah, Temple here with the service over here. Bougie very nearly getting full contact on that one. Another look at Temple's run. 
Rivers here. A couple times we called his name out in the second half, got in some dangerous spots. Headed by O'Donnell, but wide of net. And not often that Myers has that much time in the box either. There's a crowd in front of him, but still. It's Aiden Jay who is back on. Again, if you're just joining us, both these teams are coming off quick turnarounds. It's early in the season. It's a humid night with rain in the forecast at some point, either before this match is done or soon after it. So all that adding up for plenty of subs. Here's Brugi. And you can see the speed in his legs making his first appearance of the night. So Tack looking for a target and chooses Tio. Good switch there. Temple curling it in, and it's headed wide. Justin Harris was on the receiving end there and content to concede a corner. Yeah, Harris has been impressive as an outside back. Good presence of mind to put that one out, not knowing who's lurking over the back shoulder. Harris hasn't moved forward a lot for Yale, but has done a good job staying at home. Brothers quite quickly, and now Brugi. And again, Yale first to the ball. Rutgers not winning many of these long balls into the 18. No, they're not a team set up necessarily for that type of style, for, for crossing in, for long balls, for winning, for hold up play. They want to keep the ball moving quickly, press the other team, create turnovers, quick one touching, stretching out the opposing back line. And Yale's been very, very dedicated in, in terms of keeping things compact forcing Rutgers to be a wide team and to play in those crosses. The Yale center back pairing has been busy all night battling those crosses. Temple back at it, beats his man. Looking for an angle. Still on the ball, denied on one try. And now Yale has it. That's a good recovery by the Bulldogs. It was, and, and Temple there getting a couple half looks at goal. That man right there, Eric Lagos, looking for a whistle, but as it stands now, he's got the pivotal goal. Coming off a free kick in the 61st minute to put Yale in front after they went down in the first 10 minutes of action on M.D. Meyer's goal. An offense for defense sub here, or rather defense for offense sub is Rogers exits and Sigfus Arneson comes on. 20 minutes left from Rutgers. They're gonna have to come up with some sort of combination quite playing quickly, catch Yale out of shape. Hasn't happened from the run of play yet for the Scarlet Knights tonight. It seems to, even after the Lagos gold, Yale, maybe not until that substitution, they did not, they did not start sitting in after that. They didn't start sending all 11 men back. Yeah, I just don't think that's in their DNA. We'll see how that changes now. As Arneson inspects the ball, and he'll take his time on this corner. Wait, wait. Like a Yale head first, but 
hit the wrong way. And now a deflection will keep it in the area. And there's a Bulldog down on the edge of the box. All set to resume, and Ernestson gets it. Off it in in Carroll's direction. Rutgers claims it, and O'Donnell has, at least for a moment, lots of room to roam. And Yale quickly sends everybody back. There's Brugge. And it takes the Yale deflection, and it's cleared away. A little bit of a fortuitous clearance there for Rutgers. And Haddock shank that. Rutgers has not produced much on these corners. Haddock's been very steady all night, though, for, for Yale. He's done a very good job, very impressive job reading, winning things aerially. Crothers had to come in. Zelensky taken out. That one hit off of the defender, Haddock. And Rutgers will get a second try. That's going to be a yellow card for the Rutgers bench. I think there were please, half hearted please, from the Rutgers bench for a, a handball on that deflection. And you can see Jeremy Haddock had tucked it in, but well, that plus the combination of Zelensky going down. Soren Stoika says some words to the Rutgers substitutes and a Rutgers assistant as well. Oh, yeah, pointing towards their attacking end of the field and they're not headed that way. Rutgers will keep possession. Driven in sharply, but a bit too far. Now Myers was there, but so was the crowd. Yeah, Myers was lurking there, but only about a half step off from being able to put that one on frame. Mm -hmm. Soren Stoika is coming back to the Rutgers bench. And now he's talking to Jim McKeldry. Okay. The substitute players for Rutgers were a little bit close to that touchline. I don't think he's winning any fans here with the Yersack Field faithful. That's one way to put it. Uh, it's, I think it's an understatement to say Soren Stoika has been involved in the match from the outset. And again, you can't fault him for part of it because there have been 23 combined fouls and seven yellow cards, and some of them have been warranted, but I'm not sure about all of them. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult line you have to toe as a referee. You, you, you want to not necessarily impose your will on the match. You want to let a match have its flow, and it's difficult in a match like this where there just hasn't been a lot of flows. It's been very chippy, very uneven. But by the same token, you want to let a game breathe to a certain extent. O'Donnell, Yale recovering quickly. Rutgers trying to strike as Temple drives it over and out of play. And as soon as Temple gets that ball, two Yale players immediately in his shadow. Better from Rutgers. That's what Rutgers needs. Transition, quick movement, and space, and then try to either find something or put a ball into a crashing attacker on goal. Yale trying to protect their 2-1 lead. And now it's Chris Teo who goes down and Aiden Jay receives a yellow card. And a little bit perhaps of a sarcastic cheer <laughs> from the Rutgers fans here who, who think that Stoika has let this match go a little bit too far. Tough, tough match for the referee. Though. Yeah. It's, it's not, 
listen, we, we can sit up here and, and we can pinpoint every single thought and with a little bit of a different vantage point. But when you have two teams who really haven't shied away from being physical, from being chippy, not easy. That's true. It's the way Yale wants to play. It's what they've played for years. And Rutgers is a team that does not shy away from physicality either. Long run for Carroll. And it circles its way to Jay. Jay across goal, and that is just wide. The Rutgers perhaps fortunate they didn't send that one in themselves. <laughs> Very fortunate by the same token, though Dalton doing a good job cutting down that angle, making that necessary for Jay to go back post. Zelensky misses on the back end, and he didn't know it until he looked out, but it's fortunate he did. A good timing, too, for Yale as they earn another corner. Max Rogers was sent to check back in, and he'll get the chance to take this. A little bit of a leisurely pace from Max Rogers. Over the last five minutes, it's clear. Yale's demeanor has changed, and you can't blame them. Trying to protect their road lead late. Well, Carroll was there first. But now Baruji, who has played quite well in his 15 minutes on the pitch, and it's coming in for the first time midway through this second half. And he helps Rutgers win possession. Very compact from Yale right now. now. The ball was closer to Rutgers' defensive box than midfield, and there were still six white kits playing on their defensive half. Now more substituting for both sides. For Rutgers, Nestor Cabrera and Anthony O'Donnell exit. And Pablo Avila is in. No, pardon me, Cabrera is in, as is Avila. O'Donnell and Acosta are the two that go out. Harris throws in. Oh, offside. That's an easy call. Uh, Cavesa, Hero, Lesh Lamb had played that ball to the sideline and tried to re enter. A little bit of precipitation beginning to fall here at your sack field. And right on cue, a couple of the umbrellas start to pop out here. We'll let muddy things for these final 13 minutes. Uh, Brugi plays it in, can't link up with Myers. Now one thing worth mentioning in the event it accelerates quickly, we are past the official game point, which is a lot later for soccer than it is for other sports. Got to get past 70 in soccer. Temple can't stay in along that sideline. This is a Yale team that has played quite well over the last few years. Three straight winning seasons for the first time since the late 1990s. And trying to protect their first win of this new season. 
A team with lots of veterans. Good spying, good identity, doesn't shy away from who they are. They're trying to protect, not playing quite as forward as they were. Myers back out wide for Tio. And now Brugi trying to pick out Avila. That last pass not quite there. Temple bends it in. Prestis was there first. And it goes for a corner. Number eight tonight for the Knights. Yale's had eight of their own. Might be a good time to try either a short corner or drive something low. See if you can create some sort of an issue there in the penalty area. Crothers now bends it to the edge of the box and it makes for a quick clearance for Zahira Lishlam. If you're Rutgers, I mean, you're you're playing against eleven defending here. How do you? What do you do? How do you unlock it? <laughs> There's no easy way, I know. It's going to be about the combination plays. Rutgers wants to set up those little triangles, quickly move, try to find someone in space. Yale's giving them the flanks for the most part. They're not closing it entirely down. They're, they're conceding some space, and that's where Jackson Temple can be a dangerous player. But Rutgers just isn't set up to be that type of team to break down a bunkering, low-block team, which is what Temple settled into these last five minutes. Organizationally, Temple's going to be very tough to break down. Well, even that ball from the back line for Zelensky gets stopped. And again, well played. That time's a hero Lishlam. Crothers won it. Rutgers keeps it. Big intervention there from Crothers. That's off Myers. Yeah, the best defensive team last year in the Ivy League. And has put a lock on the final third of the field over the last dozen minutes or so. Yeah, it oftentimes isn't pretty from Yale, but it's effective. They're organized, they're compact, they're keeping everything in front of them. They're not letting anyone from Rutgers, Myers playing off that back shoulder, trying to get in behind. They've done a nice job of closing everything down and really bottling up those channels where Rutgers wants to run, wants to combine. Well, Rutgers restarts. Chance for something here for Brayboy. And Apollo Carroll had the first goal of the night. Curling in a dangerous ball that Dalton stops. Big save there from Dalton on the spot. Vital for Rutgers' chances over the final seven and a half minutes. Good read there from Dalton, making himself big. Reacting, diving well to his right side. And now Carroll back with it. No call on the contact. It will be a, a corner kick, though. 
don't expect Max Rogers to be in any hurry to take this one. <laughs> Just gonna say, Yale has already shown its ability to take their set pieces at a leisurely pace. Now for Yale, this is a tough stretch coming up. They're gonna go on the road to top 20 West Virginia after this. They've got some tough non-conference opponents. That's a difficult environment too, down there in Morgantown for soccer. Again, service in, played across goal, but nobody there to tap it home. Carroll very nearly got that insurance goal on that back post. Lurking, that's that poacher's instinct. That's something you can't teach. Now, Carroll, I think it's safe to say, should have had that. Somebody of his caliber. And he knows it. There's no one on the field right now or the sideline who knows that more than Carroll. Ula Mayland's back in for Rutgers. First time he's in since starting the match and playing the opening 25 minutes. He comes in in the midfield as Chris Teo, the winger, exits. Rutgers getting one more offensive playmaker on the field. So Yale again turns it away. There's penalty kick goals in the first half, then a goal off a set piece. The second one of the season already for Yale. That put them ahead. Here's Mayland, fresh on. And he went to corner. Where's the urgency from Rutgers right now? Yeah, time waning. Under five left. Most of the folks who came here to your sack, despite the now falling rain, have stuck around. Rumbling the bleachers. Crothers in, and it's right at Haddock. Speaking of time taking, Haddock is a fifth year senior. And rather than holding it for too long, he drives it to the opposite box. I think Yale's perfectly content with that. It's not about possession now, it's about trying to kill this game. Make Rutgers be the one to come on out and break them down. Burgi. Quite a factor for the last 20 minutes. Trying to split two defenders. Is that ball saved or is it a corner? That was a good save from Harris yeah. right there, keeping that from being a corner kick. Harris has been nothing short of impressive tonight. Defensively, he's been very good. Athletically, has shown everything. But that soccer IQ, the positioning repeatedly in the right place time after time. Just a sophomore, too. Once more, it's flung in. Myers gets a head on it. It's an equalizer. What a chance taken by Myers. He gets his brace first on the PK, then with the header. Huge, huge moment for Rutgers. It's coming over from high point. This crowd energized once again. And now Yale, a team that has sat in for the last 15 minutes, maybe caught back. Rutgers trying to bottle the momentum for one more. Yale has looked a little bit tired about the last five minutes or so. You have to give the Bulldogs an awful lot of credit. They approached this match with a certain mentality. They dug in, they fought. They got stuck in when need be. Temple. Serving it in again. Oh, and it's chipped wide. Could have been something for Rutgers. That side of the net was open for a moment. Yeah, Milan's popped up a couple times in the first half and very nearly here had his biggest moment of the season. Defense, 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 defense. 
That was Aiden Flynn who had snuck onto the field as a sub. But just look how much better Rutgers looks when they play with the purpose. They play quickly. They play transition between the lines. Playing advantage as Avila plays it in. Will our official bring it back? No, he won't. And now Pablo Avila, the veteran, pleading his case with our official Soren Stoika. Yeah, I think that's the right call from Stoika. I think they let the advantage play out, and there was an opportunity that presented itself. And now who's going in the book? And it's Jeremy Haddock. Oh, and it's Myers. And it hasn't stopped. It's like they play each other <laughs> every year. This, is, this has been heated, it's been chippy, it's been physical, it's been rough. There's been goals. The list of yellow cards reads 10 deep, 24 combined fouls. And it's the kind of game where, as Rutgers welcomes students back to campus, it'll whip them into a frenzy. I think we're the only ones here who have not received a card yet. <laughs> and it's only a matter of time for some of my jokes, Dom. Yeah. Hey, I didn't say that. You did. I readily admit it. <laughs> Still 90 seconds to go. Can either team find one more? Rutgers has certainly done well enough to get that equalizer. Temple. Again, Yale a little slow to get back. Avila stepping forward for Malins. Crossing it in. Trying to tee it up for Temple, and he drives it wide. Uh, Temple not far away on that one. Very nearly finding the winner. We've hit the final minute now. I think it was one touch too many. There was a couple of good half looks right there. Carroll. Still in play for Rodgers, who's got an assist tonight on what would have been the game winner. Rutgers time for one more rush in 25 seconds. And Yale clears up field down to 12. I think for Rutgers, you look at this and you have to say this feels more like game points than dropped points. It was physical. It was an up and down 90 minute match. Some animosity between te two teams that have only met now three times in their history. It was also quite a lot of fun. 90 minutes of soccer, it ends in a 2-2 draw, Rutgers and Yale.